Bill Lewis. Money, 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 money. Money, 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 money. Bill Lewis. Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests. I was invited on Beverly TV a little while ago to give a talk. And I want to show you how I started my talk. We were talking about political issues. No surprise. <clears throat> Camera starts. The United States government gave me $50,000 of free money. I didn't have to do anything for it. The government just gave it to me. Think about that. $50,000. All free. $50,000. Free dollars. The reason the government gave me $50,000 of free money is because I was involved in a low-income housing scheme where I got an investment into a low-income housing project, and the government paid me the money straight back. I paid $40,000, the government gave me $70,000 off of my taxes, and then I owned the thing and I sold it for another $25,000, and I ended up with $50,000 and the only limitation on this wonderful deal that you too could be eligible for is that you have to make at least $150,000 a year. So, that is how I began my speech, and then I talked about the politics of money and taxation, and why is it that we rich people always end up with all the money? But what I really wanted to do was throw $20 bills all over the place. Because my relationship to money is not the healthiest that it can be. Money. It's just paper, right? This is just a piece of paper which, of course, has a value. Somebody will do something for this piece of paper, but if I just threw up a bunch of pieces of paper, it would have been nothing. How many people have an emotional reaction to $20 bills flying through the air? I know, why? It's not really anything, and yet, you know, I don't want to step on it. I have this yin yang kind of thing going on. Why does money control my life? I don't want it to control my life, but, but, but there it is. And when I was 10 years old, I had a paper route right outside of Washington, D.C. Worked hard for my money, let me tell you. And I would go in collection and take big bags of coins, because that's what we got paid back then. And I would throw it onto my bed and I would roll them in it. You know those pictures of Scrooge and Mitch Duck where he's diving into the pool of gold coins? And that's how I saw myself. I didn't make any sense at all, and yet there was that... Am I the only one who has an uncomfortable relationship with money? Is there anyone else who has an uncomfortable relationship with money? Does anyone have a story they'd like to tell about how they are uncomfortable with money? Brian? I get a refund from UMass Boston, $2,500, and they counted out 20s. And I walked out of the office with this bulging wallet. I'm going to get robbed today. But it was a good feeling having that much money in my pocket for once in my life. And I ran to the bank, deposited, afraid I'd get robbed. And stayed in minutes, I, I know, I'm story. terrified of that. Who else? Is there anyone else who has one of those stories? Like, money? Money makes the world go around the world, go around the world, go around. Money makes the world go around, it makes the world go round. Money, 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 money. American money is real. 
I look at this stuff and it means something to me. Good old Jackson, somehow it's special. When I'm in other countries, it's somehow it's not quite real. I mean, it's really pretty and it's got pictures of wonderful things on it, but it's not my money. Which means that it's a lot easier to spend. Does anyone else have that situation where you go to a foreign country and go like, okay, here I have my lira, my yen, my uh, Deutsche Marks, and wait, how much does that thing cost? Oh, here, take some. Les Fontaines, the French author of all those wonderful tales, tells a story about the Savetier, the baker. Le Savetier chantois, du matin jusqu'au soir, c'était merveille de l'horreur. The baker sang from morning to night. It was wonderful to hear him sing, but his next door neighbor was a banker. <laughs> and the banker couldn't get to sleep. And so one day the banker goes up to the baker and says, How's your life? You know, and the baker and the baker is going, Oh, no, it's, it's okay. And how's your income? Yeah, sometimes less, sometimes more, but you know, I make it by. Here. And the banker gives him a pile of money. Cent écus d'or, a hundred écus of gold. And the baker cannot think of anything except the money down in the vault. He cannot sleep, he cannot eat, he cannot sing, and the ba banker is happy, he sleeps well, and finally he comes back to the banker and says, Take your money and leave me my sleep and my songs back. Well, I. I'm actually upset. I got all that free money from the U.S. government. Great, I love free money, but I got $50,000. That means somewhere in this country they laid off a teacher so that I could get free money. And I think that's insane. So I'm trying to change that. I am working for the next governor of the state of Massachusetts. And seeing as I don't know who it's going to be, I am working for Charlie Baker and Steve Grossman and Martha Copley because I can go up to them and I can say what I care about. You know what? I'm rich. I can afford to pay my taxes. So stop giving me free money. Stop giving our corporations corporate welfare. We're fine. We don't need it. So if you have that kind of relationship with money, if you think that we rich people really should be paying our full taxes, here, have a button, pass some of these out. You too might have. And so, ladies and gentlemen, money. It rules our life, we love it, and we hate it.